Welcome back. Uh, I just want to start again the session three. We are going to learn about the motive of true disciple making. Whatever we do, a motive is very important. So what is the motive of true disciple making? The motive is what? Love. Love. I want to start with this question uh, before we look at the Word of God. Where does the power of mom come from to save her children in dangerous moment? Joy Venon, and she's a great hero mom, she saved her children's life by the throwing herself beneath uh, the wheels of car that was rolling toward the cliff with them inside. Though the tragic accident let her never walk again, she saved all children. Mom's love is so powerful even to you know, just throw herself in front of the car to save her children in times of trouble. Love is a driving power in our lives. Love is a great motivation to keep us moving forward. Let's look at the Word of God for today. And this is the Word of God. When they had a finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you, Jesus said. Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I, I love you, Jesus said. Feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you were younger, uh, you dressed yourself and uh, went uh, where well you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. And this was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumors spread among the brothers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. This is what I've got given to us through the John chapter 21. From here, I want to just ask a first question here. What is the motive of true disciple making? I want to point out three things here. The first one is, it is selfless love for Jesus. It was just before the Passover feast that Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. This is a radical love Jesus showed to Peter and his disciples until the end. It is selfless love to his disciples, even to the betrayer. He asked us to love others in the same way he loved. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you, Jesus said. Feed my lambs. 
Here, Jesus asked only one question three times to Peter. Do you love me more than these? Jesus asked him three times to confirm his love for him because Jesus knew Peter will follow what he truly loves. He asked Peter three times, Do you love me more than these? Why did he ask him three times? It is because he denied Jesus three times. Now when he asked Peter, Do you love me? In Greek word, love is used in a different term. Jesus asked Peter with uh, agapao love, it is the unconditional, eternal, and perfect, and divine love of God. Do you really agapao me? Do you really love me perfectly? Do you love me unconditionally and uh, perfectly? This is what Jesus asked. Agape love is God's divine love, unconditional and perfect love. But Peter answered him with a different term of love. Yes, love. Yeah, yes I love you, Lord Jesus, I phileo you. The love he answered was actually phileo love, which is more like a friendship love between friends. Why did he answer to Jesus with a phileo love? Peter thought he could do whatever cost to follow Jesus, but he failed three times. He denied Jesus three times on the night Jesus was arrested. Now he feels guilty and does not have a any confidence to follow Jesus with the unconditional and perfect and eternally divine love. That's why he answered Jesus with filial love, not perfect love. He answered to Jesus, my, my Lord, my best love I can show to you is a filial love as a good friend. Then when Jesus asked him third time again, do you love me? Do you phileo me? Jesus changed the term from agapao love to phileo love, lastly. Jesus dropped down to Peter's level of love to encourage him, to comfort him, and restore his failure. What a great love and selfless love of Jesus we can see even to the failure like Peter. And Jesus asked his disciples to love in the same way he loves. Second, it is Sacrificial love for Jesus. I tell you the truth, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went well you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter will glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Here Jesus gave a hint with what kind of death Peter would die in the future. According to the church tradition, he was crucified. When it came time for him to be crucified, he did not feel he was worthy to be crucified as Jesus was. So he asked to be crucified upside down. The love Jesus showed to Peter changed his life completely. The motive is love. The motive is love. The only power that motivated him to die for Jesus was sacrificial love for him. We understand that even on our human level that people greatly love the great sacrifice for sermon. Jesus demands us to take up the cross daily to follow him. Luke chapter 9 verse 23 says, and If any man will come after me, let him deny himself take up his cross. One more love I want to introduce is it is a submissive, obedient love for Jesus. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, Lord who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked the Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. As Jesus told Peter how he would glorify God through his death in the future, uh, Peter was curious about the one Jesus loved. So he asked Jesus, Jesus, what about this guy? What about John? Then Jesus answered to him, even if I want him to remain until 
I return. What is that to you? What Jesus said is actually, it is none of your business, brother. Peter, you must follow me no matter what it costs. This is what Jesus said to Peter. Forget about others. You must follow me with a submissive love. An obedient love. That is the matter. This is what Jesus says. If you love me, you will obey what I command. This is a true story I heard from a, a friend who has been working in the Islamic country as a missionary for a long time. It is very hard to see you know, um, immediate fruit uh, there in the Islamic country. So uh, sometimes many missionaries you know, focus on the one converted Christian as their own disciple in their prayer letters. They all said in their prayer letters, and he's my sheep and I'm feeding him and training him by the word of God, etc. But one day, the, one this uh, converted brother came to see my friend with a serious question. Hey, missionary, do you preach the gospel because you love me? Or do you pretend to love me to preach what you want to achieve? What is true? Tell me. When my friend heard the serious question from this guy, and he could not answer straight away because he realized he pretends to love him out of the pressure from his home church. Later on, I heard that he really confessed his sin before the Lord and this brother who asked his true motive. Since then, the direction of his ministry was totally changed, and God poured out the new blessing upon him and his ministry. That was a true story I heard from him. Brothers and sisters, and I just conclude this time and check our motive today. Before we do the disciple making, and we must check our motive. Who shall separate us from the love of Jesus? Shall, we, shall, shall trouble or hardship or the persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or, or, or soul? As there is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as a sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. No matter how hard we work for the Lord, if we don't do the work of God out of love, it is dead works. There will be no reward in heaven. Let us check our heart today. Apostle Paul says in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. What is the secret to victory in the Christian life? The compelling love of Jesus can drive out fear, the hatred, hostility of this world. Amen? Well, is your love moving to the world or to the Lord? To not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of simple man, the lust of his eyes and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the Father, but from the world. What is your, your love moving to? To the love of God in Christ or to the love of the world? Jesus asks us today, do you really love me more than these, more than blank? Then feed my sheep. If you are in leadership, just make sure we should take care of the Lord's sheep, not yours, not ours. Jesus calls us to the selfless love, the sacrificial love, and the submissive love for him. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This is the motive of true disciple making. After this, and I just encourage you, our brothers and sisters, and uh, with your facilita facilitator, and through this reflection question, 
just to share something you found in this session. God bless you. See you next session.